Interior, dusk. It is the night of the inaugural World's Fair. Outside, the Windy City is abuzz with activity, but here, Mary and Matilda sit in Matilda's bedroom. Draped across Shay's lounges, of which there are ten in this room alone, they giggle with girlish glee. Their coiffed hair mingles with the flowery perfume in the air, touching everything. The chestnut table, the chestnut box on the table, chestnut drawers, chestnut doors, and chestnut walls, carved with chestnut landscapes. Dressed in silk robes and stockings, Mary and Matilda are the epitome of late 19th century sweethearts. Coy, earnest, and quite racist. They primp and preen for a night out on the town. Oh, Mary, I'm dreadfully nervous to be riding in Frederick Donahue's carriage tonight. He's such a dream. Thank you for coming over before we go out. I'm so excited. The World's Fair, the wonders of 1893, right at our doorstep in the beautiful city of Chicago. Oh, the glamour, the ingenuity. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh, unable to vote, even a little bit. Of course, Matilda. I know he's been courting you mercilessly, but I hope you don't fall prey to Frederick Donahue's charms. He may not be what he seems. Oh, but Mary, how could I not? We are women, after all. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my body is a prison. Well, Mary, do you mind adjusting my corset? Of course, dear. Invasive or non? It's a big day. I think invasive is called for, don't you? That's exactly what I was thinking. Matilda expertly dry swallows five sleeping pills and slumps onto her favorite chaise lounge. Mary unlaces Matilda's corset, and from the chestnut box on the chestnut table, she produces gloves, a surgical mask, and a scalpel. All right, then! Mary removes Matilda's pancreas, her right kidney, her spleen, and a portion of her liver. She tosses each of them into the chestnut box, imagining the cheers of thousands as she does so. An athlete and a woman! Matilda is still deeply a snooze as Mary stitches her back up. She fits a corset around her friend, newly freed as she is from the bodily constraints of so many organs inside of her. Mary laces up the bodice and pulls the emptiness inside of Matilda, letting the corset cinch snugly to a 20-inch circumference. The last pull jolts Matilda awake. Christopher Columbus! Matilda! Language! Sorry, dear. Did everything go all right? Swimmingly. Especially since you had your appendix permanently removed. It was much quicker. Oh, you're a doll. Matilda, now that you're awake, I have a confession to make. A secret that has been weighing quite heavily on me. I yes. Frederick Donahue has arrived. Thank you, Francis. Send him in. Oh, Matilda, if only you knew. Frederick Donahue enters the room. His mustache waxed, his shoes shining. His face betrays an arrogant air, a radiant wealth, but behind this facade, a secret. Matilda, my dear. Delightful to see you. Freddy! They embrace with tongue. Hello, Mr. Donahue. Mary. Uh, all, always a pleasure. We're so excited for the World's Fair, darling. Yes, as am I. Quickly, to the carriage. Stop! Don't move one more muscle! Matilda, before you run off with this man, I must tell you... I can't cover up for you any longer, Frederick. Mary, you're trembling. What is it? Mary, no. Oh. Frederick is a duck. No, worse. He's two ducks stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Mary runs to Frederick and tears open his suit to reveal not one, but two ducks stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Can it be true? I feel faint. Please, Matilda, forgive me. Oh, God. Really, Mary? Well, two can play at that game. Matilda, you should know that your little friend there isn't who she says she is either. She is actually three ducks. 
stacked on top of each other. And under the second duck from the top, a series of three smaller ducks making up that central duck's body. Frederick tears open Mary's robe to reveal not one, not two, but three ducks. And under the middle duck's coat, can it be so? Indeed, three smaller ducks. Christopher Columbus! Mary, language! Fine, it's true. But our friendship, Matilda, I could have never lied about- Everyone stop this! I have seen many things in this house, and I have stayed silent, but I will not tolerate it any longer. Miss Matilda has been keeping a secret from you, a dark, terrible secret! She is not what she appears to be. She is actually- a <gasps> Frances staggers back and falls, the bullet hitting her right in the heart. Matilda brings the smoking gun to her lips and blows away the last tendrils of smoke. Mary and Frederick stand aghast as the debutante throws her firearm to the ground. Tears flow from her eyes. I will not have them speak for me. My secret shall come from my own lips. Frederick, Mary, it's time you both knew. I am one sixteenth black. Oh. Oh. I have to go. Um, I think Mother is uh, telegraphing me. Uh, good evening. <laughs>